Well, you know, it was, uh, it was a big turnout. I think the last time I came to a meeting that was this turnout was about the silos, remember? The, uh, the silos that were going to go up near survival school. That, that was a huge turnout, I remember that. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of emotion, a ton of emotion, um, a lot of pain expressed. Uh, I think in in some of these statements about about all of this passion, a lot of passion, a lot of love, like a lot of passion for Gunawake. Whether you were speaking on all different sides, that's it was very evident. No one was passive about this topic. Um, I think that the most important thing and why I came tonight was I wanted to um, show respect to come here and actually face everybody and say, yeah, I'm the one that got the lawyer and I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm here to, to, to dialogue with you guys. And whether you agree with me or don't agree with me, um, at least I showed, I, I wanted them to know I was showing them that respect to come and, and, and attend these meetings. So um, I, were we going to um, come up with a solution tonight? No. Uh, I, I really believe that this, the whole concept of whether you belong or don't belong to a community is the most fundamental role concept of a person. Everybody wants to belong. Everybody wants to know they can they belong to where their people are from. And that's why there's so much passion tied to this. Now, I think that the the kind of process that the council put forward is hopeful and I am hopeful to that. Um, you know, and I'm I'm, I'm going to participate as much as I can to be part of the solution. And every time when I think about this stuff, I think about always think about the kids. I think about when they grow up and they're my age, I don't want them to be asking, Mom, what, what did you do? Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you stand up? Why didn't you participate? I think we need to think about that. Where This is a very passionate issue, but our kids deserve us to go above and beyond and to come together of one mind and build our nation. We, we have to build our nation. We're going into a future that's so unknown. So many things are facing us. And our strength and unity and numbers is what is going to, you know, make us, you know, that powerhouse in the future that we were when the Europeans first came here. But it, it, that birthing process of a nation is going to be a very painful process. It's a very painful process to birth a new nation. I, and I think it's going to be unlike anything we've ever seen but it's going to be based upon, you know, the very fundamental laws of the great law. And I think, I think that there, we can do it. It's, but it's, it is hard and it is emotional. And, uh, yeah. Um, uh, other question, and, and I have to ask the question. There's um, obviously, and, and I think um, th there was a lot of support for the law as it is and as it's developed over the years. And, um, you know, over, over the course of the last few weeks, it just seems to be that it maybe hasn't changed as much as, as much as some people thought it would. And I know that's difficult for you in terms of the numbers of people who, are, who seem to be supporting the law and are not um, as sympathetic to your your position. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be that's going to be tough for you. How do you deal with that? You know, um, I believe I was raised that when you believe something is wrong, even though maybe you're up against a lot of people, um, you got to stand your ground. And, um, you know, if you look back into some of our recent history, like, you know, segregation in the States, it was the way it was. And everybody thought it was good. It was, whether you thought it bad or good, it was the law. But now looking back, we understand that that, with 2020 vision, we know it wasn't right. I. I strongly believe that this, if, if, if the membership law and the whole concept of you marry out, get out was a positive nation building law, then I feel, I don't feel you would see so much pain. I don't think you'd see so much anger. The, the natural way in w that, that the energy that gathers around something reflects that of the law. And I feel that because it, it's based upon a fear it's based upon a fear of being, you know, eradicated off this earth. And, I, you know, that's a fear that was instilled by the Indian Act in, in a policy of, of blood quantuming. And you can say four great-grandparents or you can say half. It, it's the same thing. And I think that that whole law, the Indian Act, and that colonial law was meant to um, eradicate us off the earth. And 
we have to recognize it for what it is and we have to go back to understanding how did our nation, how did the, 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 the Iroquois, how did the Mohawks, how are we so powerful? What was the basis for that? And, and I think we need to really co take you know, examples from that and move forward. Now, is it hard to face down people that are very passionate? Maybe just as hard as for them to hear me as passionate from my point of view. But what I really, really respect is coming here and being able to dialogue with everybody. This is where it's going to start. And 6,500 people are in this community. This is a small portion of that, and we need more people to get involved in this discussion. So I think we have to figure out, um, you know, I was talking recently, we need to address a lot of things moving forward. I think the, the hurt and the anger uh, and the pain that comes from the past, that of people having had to leave and all that kind of stuff, I think that needs to be addressed maybe in our own Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And having that validated, I think it's really, really important. So, um, you know, do I have the answers? No, but I really would like to be part of the solution. Because I don't have the answers. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um,